So okay guys, today I'm going to be talking about a failed project, and when I say failed, I still ended up building the thing, it just didn't turn out the way I imagined it, or the way I wanted it to. But I still thought it'd be fun to cover it for a video, explain what it was for originally, and what all is working and what all is not. But with that said, let's get to this. This was originally going to be a very low profile circuit. I wasn't going to have anything plug and play, like slottable, but it ended up becoming that way over time. I just couldn't get the parts I needed to, and I couldn't get the thing low enough in profile to build it within the infinity mirror that I planned to actually put it in originally. A lot of this came down to not getting the voltage regulators and various other things that I needed to in time. So that infinity mirror right next to this uh, box in the clip, that is what I wanted to build this thing inside of. I wanted to have a mobile phone charger on it and three other DC barrel jack outputs. The fourth output would have been to toggle on the infinity mirror and that would have been built inside the case. As you can see, I was getting a little bit too ambitious with this project and my patience was getting very thin. So what I ended up doing was just building what I could on hand with what I had. So I decided to use this DC step up step down boost circuit. This thing took a lot of space and as you can see that's primarily the reason why I wasn't able to build this thing low profile and put it inside my infinity mirror without making it look goofy. Which is probably way better than what I could have got away with with the voltage regulator it would allow me to plug in a lot more devices than I would have otherwise without the thing getting overly hot. But yeah it's less than ideal and not exactly what I wanted in the end. Anyway, the build itself was pretty much straightforward. All I did was solder some things to the board to get the relative dimensions of the actual casing. And then I took that circuit board, scanned it within my paper scanner to build a frame around it, drilled some holes in that uh, proto board so I could have some mounting spots for it. And I pretty much made sure everything aligned up, including the micro USB jack using a digital caliber. Now this I'm actually really glad that I did because originally I would just leave a giant opening or guess the size of my micro USB ports but in the end I got this thing pretty much spot on where I could plug in a micro USB cord and there'd be zero space left on the sides of it. Now if you're wondering why there's a USB cord even connected to this thing, well it's for reprogramming the Remus D1 Mini. You don't really need that plugged in to use the device though so... If you do plan to build this, just know that. But yeah, overall, it's pretty much the same thing that I talked about before when building a Wemos D1 Mini Relay Switch, except in, instead of using a relay, we used MOSFETs. Now, as you can see on screen, here is the wiring. It's not the greatest. I just used what, what I had on hand, and since I was going to be putting very low power devices up to this thing, I decided to use a very, very low gauge wire, and it's only going to be a 12 volt device. So if anything goes wrong, it should be fairly minimal. And thanks to the step up, step down circuit, my uh, We Must D1 Mini should be saved in case anything ever did happen. In the wiring diagram, I'll just probably link the same circuits.js file from the Wemos D1 Mini TV Begone project. It's, a, it's essentially the same thing except another MOSFET has been added on instead of just one. But yeah guys, that's basically it for this video. If you do wish to replicate it, down below is a circuits.js file that you can use to open up the circuit diagram as well as the as well as the 3D printed files and the Arduino code. If you want to use the Arduino code, keep in mind it's not set up to be static, so if your network IP addresses change a lot, then the IP address of your ESP8266 will change, so keep that in mind. Also, it's not set up for any kind of weird port forwarding or anything like that, so if you want to control your devices over the internet, you'll have to look at another video on how to do that. But yeah, for the time being, I'm going to leave today's video off here. But before I go, those two infinity mirrors that you guys saw in some of the B-roll clips of this uh, Wemos D1 Mini Switch, I'm going to be covering those very soon on the channel, so stay tuned if you want to know how I made those. But yeah, guys, I'm going to leave this video off here now. DTPK signing off. Peace. Into the new folder. In my case, it's going to be CD Team Viewer. And once we're in here, we'll have... For you. But once you triggered the exploit, the screen should flash blue and if it flashes